In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at linear relations. And this is going to be a little bit of a review from grade nine. So hopefully um, you remember some of this stuff um, or hopefully it kind of uh, rejogs your memory um, because this is going to be key to our first unit. So just as a bit of review, so an equation of a line. So hopefully in grade nine, you learned the equation of a line is something like y equals mx plus b. Right, you might have used maybe different letters, maybe it was like A and B um, or things like that. Um, but we're going to be sticking with M and B. Y and X are going to represent um, our unknown variables or our independent and dependent variables. You could think of it as the values um, on a graph, the X and Y axis, or the X and Y values of a point. Right, so the equation of line Y equals MX plus B. M and B represent two different things you might remember, but M represents what we call the slope. Now there are many words for M or slope or different ways that we can represent it, right? So you might remember it as slope or maybe as rate of change. Multiplier might be a term that you used before, rate of change multiplier. Um, maybe a formula, rise over run. Um, which we, which you may have also learned as change in y over change in x, which is what the tri triangles mean, is change in y. So those are all different terms for the m value, um, and they all mean the same thing. So it might just be just how it's represented, whether you're looking at a pattern or a scenario um, or a graph. Um, or a table, you might use different terms, but they all mean the same thing. Now B, for our B value, B represents our y-intercept. So B represents our y-intercept, but you may also know it as the constant, or the starting value, Starting value, initial value, maybe a base fee. Oops. There's different terms maybe depending on what scenario you're looking at, but they all kind of mean where we start from. So y-intercept, constant, starting value, initial value, base fee, all different terms for the b value. One of the main things with the equation of a line is that lines can have different slopes, right? So slope, again, we just kind of mentioned is also um, the rate of change. I'm gonna try to move away from the multiplier because we're gonna try to move away from uh, kind of these like visual patterns and more into scenarios and lines. So slope or rate of change, and we do have formulas again, like we mentioned, rise over run, change in y over change in x. Um, if you don't remember, this little Greek sign here is delta. It's a Greek letter, and it rep just means the change in, or the difference, or the change in. So the change in y divided by the change in x. Now, the greater the magnitude or the greater the value of the slope, the steeper the line is. So if you have a high value, that means we have a steep line, right? Or it's growing very fast. And there's different ways or different, four different types of lines that we could have or different slopes. So we could have a positive slope, which means the line would look something like this. Um, and when we're talking about reading a line or looking at a line and telling what direction it goes in, we're talking about when we go left to right. So left to right, it's increasing, it's going up, it's positive. Another line, if it's negative or has a negative slope, it's going down. So from left to right, the line is going down. A zero slope means, oops, that's not quite like that, it means it's a flat line. So a flat line or zero, zero slope, zero speed. If you think back to a distance time graph, um, it's just a flat horizontal line. Undefined, undefined is kind of the opposite of zero, 
um, in that you don't have a value when you try to find the slope of this line on your calculator. You get an error on the calculator, which is fine, um, which just means you have an undefined slope, and it's a vertical line. So a vertical line has an undefined slope. With slopes, we might have parallel and perpendicular lines. So parallel lines have the same the same slopes and they might look something like this. So two lines that are parallel with each other. Again, parallel means they um, run side by side. They never touch. So maybe you have something like y equals 3x plus 2 and y equals 3x plus 4. These are parallel lines because the m value or the slopes are the same. Now perpendicular lines are different. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. So that may be a term you remember from last year, negative reciprocals. So they're negative reciprocals of each other. So a negative reciprocal basically means it's the same values but flipped and the opposite sign. So the negative means the opposite sign. Reciprocal just means we're flipping it. Um, so if we kind of visualize what perpendicular lines look like, perpendicular lines are lines that cross at 90 degrees. So you may want to just remember that. So 90 degrees. And negative reciprocals, and again, um, they are the opposite, the negative or the opposite sign and they're flipped. So say for example, we have a slope of three over two x plus four. The negative reciprocal of that would be negative because this one was positive, right? This three over two is positive. So that means the other line is going to have a negative slope and the values are going to be flipped. So say y equals negative two over three x plus three. Again, that C that or that B value, that constant, that doesn't really matter. We're more concerned about the multiplier or the slope, right? So the slopes are going to tell us if the line is parallel or perpendicular. Here they're negative reciprocals, right? So they are perpendicular. Now you might have there's many different things you could have, right? Just some other things that may come up. Um, say if you had a positive, or sorry, a whole number slope. So say y equals four x plus three, when we think of the reciprocal of a whole number, right, we think of a whole number as a fraction over one, so that means the reciprocal would be negative one over four, x plus say five, right? So these are just different examples um, or different scenarios you might come across. But again, negative reciprocal means opposite signed and flipped. So. One thing that we want to do, or hopefully we want to make sure that we remember to do, is to determine the equation of a line. Right? So we, different scenarios that we went, look, that you looked at in grade nine, whether you looked at determining the equation or the rule from a pattern, from a graph, from a table, um, from a word scenario, or from two points. Right. So one of the key things that you need to know for that is the equation for um, calculating the slope. Right, so again, slope equals m, which is rise over run, which is change in y over change in x. There is a algebraic formula to represent that, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Right, But if you remember different ways from grade 9, that's fine as well. This is kind of more of a shortcut or a very literal way of finding the slope of a line using two points. The y's just represent the y values of a point of points, and the x's represent the x values. So I'll show you two ways to find the slope. One, I'll show you the way of how um, I've taught grade nines, and one is using this new kind of formula for slope. So to determine the slope of the line containing negative the point negative eight one and negative nine two. So in grade nine, you may have been taught, okay, well let's put this into a table, an x and a y. So I have negative eight, negative nine, the two x values, and we have one and two, which are the two y values. 
So here we would find the change in y and the change in x. The change in y from 1 to 2 is plus 1, and from negative 8 to negative 9 is minus 1. So we've gone down 1. So this means then that our m value, which is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, change in y is here, change in x is here. So we get 1 over negative 1, or that works out to negative 1. So that may be how you remember finding the slope or, um, of two points. Using the formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, what we're doing here is we're taking the points that were given and saying, okay, this is one of them is my first point, one of them is my second point. It doesn't really matter which is which as long as you're consistent. So let's say negative 8, 1 is my x1 and my y1. So those are my the x value of my first point and the y value of my first point. Negative 9, 2 will have, be my x2 and my y2, the x and y values of my second point. I'm going to plug those values into this formula. So y2 is 2 minus 1 divided by negative 9 minus negative 8, I get 1 over negative 1, which equals negative 1. So two different ways to find the slope of a line using two points, right? You can use the table, you can just plug this into this formula. Again, whichever way you prefer um, is fine. Now what we want to do is determine the equation of a line. And there's different ways you can do that, right? Some of you might use guess and check to find that B value um, or that Y intercept. I'm going to show you a way that I want you to try to focus on using because it is going to be a way that you can determine the B value regardless of the points you have, right? Or the points that you're given or what, regardless of what the slope is, um, because depending on what the values are, it might be difficult to guess and check or to work backwards. So how it works, we're going to start off with the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. Now to determine the equation of a line, we need to find m and b. Now we already know our m value because we've already found that out. Now we need to find our b value. So right now with our equation, I can plug in negative 1 for our m value. And I'm going to use a different color negative 1 for our m value, we have x and then plus b. So I need to find my b value, or I need to solve this equation for my b value, except I can't solve for it because I don't have a y and an x. I have three unknown vari variables, or three unknown values. So what I need to do is I need to plug in an x and a y. So I'm going to pick one point, negative 8, 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute those two points into the equation. So the 1 is the y value, so that's going to go in for y. So I'm going to have 1 equals negative 1. And instead of x, I'm going to have negative 8. And then plus b. We don't know what that is. Now that I've substituted values into all my variables, I can now solve for my unknown value. So I'm going to simplify each side. So 1 stays the same. 1 equals negative 1 times negative 8, which is positive 8 plus b. Now I have a one-step equation. So 8 plus what equals b? Right? So we're again thinking about solving equations. I want to cancel the 8 out on one side to get the variable by itself. So I'm going to subtract 8, subtract 8 from the other side. One side is going to cancel out, and we're left with negative 7 equals b. Now that I solve that equation, I can plug that back into my formula, y equals negative 1x plus b. Not plus b, I know what b is now, sorry. Negative 7. So now I have 
my equation of a line. I have an M value and a B value. I don't need to, you shouldn't have anything in for Y and X. We don't need anything for Y and X because Y and X represent our unknown values or our variables. So we're not going to plug in anything for those ones. So this was as far as we go when we want to find the equation of a line. The next thing that we're going to do, or the last thing that we're going to do, is we're going to look at graphing, um, or second last thing we're going to do, we're going to look at graphing the equation y equals mx plus b. Right, so again, like I said, this is going to focus a lot on all of what we've done with lines or equations of lines. And graphing them is one of the things that we had done in grade 9 um, as well. So first, what we want to do when we graph a line is we want to identify two things. We want to find what our M value is and what our B value is. So in this case, our B value, again, if we think of Y equals MX plus B, our constant is 2. And our M value is our slope, our multiplier, the value with, attached to the X, or 2 as well. Now these two things tell us two different things, but they will help us graph. So first, the B value tells us our starting point, our y-intercept. So that means if we go down this y-axis, this vertical axis, to the value of 2, we can put a point, because that's our starting value. So this is our B value here. Now M, M tells us our multiplier, our slope, or our rise over run. Now, if we think of it as a whole number, 2, how do I represent 2 as a fraction? Well, 2 is a whole number, so as a fraction, it should be 2 over 1. So this now tells us our rise and our run. So when we convert it to a fraction, we can find our rise and our run. So that means that from every point to the next, we go up 2 for our rise and over 1 for our run. So let's represent that on our graph. So we have a point. B, our starting value at 2. Our slope tells us to rise 2. So we went up 2 and we run 1. So like that means I go to the right 1. Remember, we read our graph from left to right. So there's a point. Now the slope tells me that to get to the next point, I need to do the same thing. Up 2 over 1. There's another point. I'm going to repeat. Up 2 over 1. There's another point. And I can start to fill out the pattern. Now because we're graphing, really we only need about three points to be able to kind of roughly take a ruler, line it up with those points, and draw a nice line. Make sure you put arrows on the ends to show that that line goes on forever. Right, but now we have our plus two and our plus one, so our rise and our run. For the next one, similar idea, except we don't have a B value. We just have Y equals three over two X plus nothing. So because we don't have anything, this could be would be the same thing as saying plus zero. So by nothing being there, that does give us some information. Right, so it tells us that our m value is 3 over 2, our multiplier, our slope, and our b value, because nothing was there, is 0. So that's helpful because that tells us that we have a point at 0. We have a b value. Our, our multiplier, our slope, 3 over 2, tells us our rise over run. So that means we go up 3. 1, 2, 3, over 2, 1, 2, and we plot our point, and we repeat, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, another point. So really I have three points now, I should have enough information to draw a line. Line it up properly, and put arrows in the end. Now, if, say, for whatever reason, your graph doesn't have enough space to go to the right, you can always go to the left by reversing the steps. 
So instead of going up three and to the right two, you could go down three and to the left two, and you still end up at the same spot, right? Because what you'd be doing is you'd be having negative three over negative two, which still means three over two, right? Negative over a negative is a positive, right? So you would have opposite going in the opposite direction. It might look different, but it still forms the same line. Next one, so this one should be fairly straightforward. We'll kind of go through this one rather quick. So our M value is negative three, which is our rise over run. It's not a fraction, so we're, let's make it a fraction by making it over one because it's a whole number. Our B value is negative two. Because it's negative, it doesn't change anything. We still have a B value at negative two. And our slope says that we go down three, one, two, three. Oops. One, two, three. And it's a positive one, so we go to the right one. And we're going to put a point. And we're going to repeat that. One, two, three down to the right one. I have enough there. I have three points. I can go through now. And I'm going to draw a line, put arrows on either end. And there I have my line represented by that equation. Lastly, x equals 4 and y equals negative 3. So you may have learned about this in grade 9. Hopefully you did. If not, it might have been one lesson. But these are two types of special lines, right? So x equals 4. So this is saying that x always equals 4. And y equals negative 3 is basically saying that y always equals negative three. So what type of line would have the x value always staying the same? All right, well, let's take a look. Where's x equals four? That's right here. So what it's saying is that on this line, x is always four. So that means I can't have a point here or here or anything like that because that means the x value is not four. If I have a point here though, x is still 4, here x is still 4, here x is still 4, here, and here, and here, x hasn't changed, right? The x value of all those points is 4. So when we see an equation that is x equals a value, that is a vertical line. And if you might guess, well, when y equals negative 3, y equals negative 3, that means that the y value always equals negative 3. So if we go to negative 3, we're always going to have, for every point along this line, is going to have this same y value or the same vertical value of negative 3, which would make it a horizontal line. So it's kind of opposite of what we might think, because we think of x as horizontal usually and y as vertical. But in the case of a line, when we have it as x equals 4 and y equals, or x equals something and y equals something, they represent the opposite. So x equals a value is a vertical, y equals a value is a horizontal line. Then lastly, mathematical expressions. So lastly, what we want to do is just kind of think about writing out the following as a mathematical expression or equation. So thinking about um, how some of these might look or what some of these might be. So the value 5 is decreased by a number. So how would we write that mathematically? The value of 5 is decreased by a number. Well value of 5 is decreased by a number. So we have value of 5. Decreased means subtract by a number. We don't know what that number is, so let's use a placeholder, which 
we'll call x because okay, we let letters represent our unknown values for b half of a value is increased or half of a value increased by five is one half of a value. We don't know what the value is. Again, let's call it x, half of that. So how do I find half of a number? Well, I divide it by two. So I have half of a value, but then I increase it by five. So increase by five means add five, and then is one. Is one, is usually represents equals. So is one or equals one. C, 30% of a number. So 30% of a number, you might be, you might want to say like 30% x, right? Or 30% of x, right? But mathematically, how do we do that, right? Yeah, you could, you might be able to type in 30 and then hit the, or find the number, then hit the percent sign, then hit 30. I'm honestly not too sure how to use the percent button on a calculator, I just use the mathematical operation. So when we want to find um, the percent of a number, we take the percent as a decimal, which is 0 0.30, and we multiply that by the value. So we could say 0 0.30 times x, but there I don't like to use times or like the x symbols for multiplying. So if we want to represent multiplying, we could use brackets like this, or because we're multiplying a variable, we could just put the variable right next to the number and it's assumed that the operation is multiplying. And then lastly, D, three times a number subtracted from five is eight less than seven times a number. So three times a number Again, we don't know what that number is, so we say three times a number, or three x, subtracted from 15. So whatever this number is, it's being subtracted from 15. So we would have to do 15 minus three x, and then is, again represents equals, is eight less than seven times a number. So eight less than seven times a number. So seven times a number, we're going to assume that it's the same number. So seven X minus eight, so eight less than whatever seven times a number is. Now, if those numbers weren't the same or we wanted to assume they weren't the same, we could use different letters to represent different numbers, right? So if these two numbers are not the same, we would have to use different letters. If they were the same, like we're assuming here, we can have the same letter. So that's it for day one of review. So it's kind of a lot. Hopefully a lot of it rings a bell. Um, we will be focusing heavily on linear equations in this first unit, graphing lines, um, working with those lines, understanding um, how to solve equations or work with equations. Um, so please make sure that you are, um, are reviewing, especially if you haven't um, or if you don't quite remember this, or maybe you had math first semester in grade nine, so it's been almost a year since you've done it, um, ask for help, reach out. Um, maybe you still have your grade nine notes to review. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you can always go back and take a look at um, the grade nine videos to kind of give yourself a refresher as well.